first thing was a boy named Mark. His last name started with a T. He was a bit taller than me, had blonde hair, a bit heavy set. In the wintertime he always had this red, like, puffy red jacket that he wore. So I could kind of see him coming from a mile away because that jacket was just like fire engine red. It's funny that I remember that little detail. I don't remember what color his eyes were. But I remember the sound of his voice. He had this smooth talking voice. Every day, Mark would threaten to rape and murder me. Every day. He would say things like, I know where you live and I'm going to come into your house at night and murder you in your bed. I'm going to come in your house and I'm going to stab you and there's nothing you can do. I want to rape you. I want to destroy your vagina. Except he didn't say vagina, he said the C word. The one that's worse than the P word. He said he wanted to destroy my anus. Except he didn't say anus, he used the nastier A word with hole at the end of it. He would show me his pocket knife and talk about how easy it would be to stab me through the eyeball and watch me bleed from my brain. And he would tell me how much it was going to hurt. He would tell me he would murder and rape me in front of my parents. And this went on for a long time and I would ignore it at first or I would just look at him like, oh, come on. And I would try to ignore it, but when it happened day after day after day after day, I went to my school counselor because if you went to the principal, they'd tell you to go to your counselor, and the counselors were arranged by letters of the alphabet, like there was a counselor for like A through G, and then another one for G through N, and then another one for O through Z, and my last name starts with an H, so I went to my counselor. You want to know what he said? Just ignore it. He's just being a boy. Boys do that. He's probably got a crush on you. Does rape and murder sound like a crush? Does threatening a girl who is already afraid of you, threatening her life, threatening to rape her and hurt her, that's a crush? That's not okay. No. Every night, I was scared in my own house. Every night, I was terrified. I was afraid to look out the windows and find this guy standing out there, waiting to break into my house and kill me in my bed. I was afraid to be home alone because I was afraid he would come into my house at any moment when I was alone and kill me and spray the walls with my blood. I was afraid he would corner me somewhere private at school and actually rape me. And nobody did a damn thing when I tried to tell. They just said he was being a boy. That he had a crush. That's not a crush. That's not a boy being a boy. That is a bully. If somebody makes you afraid for your life in your own house, that is a bully. That is an abuser. Bullying is peer abuse. And I endured it every day from this guy. Every day. Every day. Every day. I would walk to school, but this guy would, would catch me on the way to school sometimes, and I was just scared. 
scared of him because sometimes he would catch me and show me his pocket knife and pretend like he was going to stab me with it. Maybe he never really intended to, but, you know, tell that to me when I'm tiny and small and just, you know, there was no way I could have fought him off. One time he put his arm around me on the way to school and I elbowed him in the gut and I took off running to get away from him because I thought he was going to hurt me. I never got in trouble for that. But I was so scared to walk to school alone, but I didn't want to say anything to my parents to make it think that I had done something to make him do this. You know. So I did something to get in so much trouble that my mom had to drive me to school. Better to think they couldn't trust me than to think that I couldn't stand up to some brat boy that was threatening me every day. So I got myself in trouble and, like I said, my mom got to drive me to school every day and come and get me and take me home. <laughs>